welcome to our time of story. Uh, it's good to just be with you again. And today, I've got something very critical to share with you. In fact, you know what I titled it? I titled it, you need to know this. You need to know this. This is the great, one of the great determinants of your life. A lot of us have things happening in our life. And we don't attribute to this source. And what's that? Today we are going to study. You know, it's called study to show self approval to God. So let's study this great life determinants. And this you need to know. Let's just take a picture of this in the book of Numbers, chapter 14. Let me open there for us. The book of Numbers 14. That's from verse 1. To introduce this, I want you to see this in your Bible. Let's read it. This was after Moses sent the spies to the promised land and they got to the promised land. They came back with negative reports and the whole people of Israel, the whole nation, reacted this way. Numbers 14, verse 1. It says, So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword, and that our wives and our children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly congregation, children of Israel, but Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes, and they spoke to all the congregation children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delight in us, they will bring us to this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are bread. Their protection has departed from them. The Lord is with us. Do not fear them. And all the congregation said to stone them with stones. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before the, all the children of Israel. Praise the Lord. I want you to see something. When they were given the news about the promised land, how beautiful it was, and how giant the inhabitants were, the people began to speak. And what were they saying? They were talking that they should have died in the wilderness. They were saying, why the Lord bring us over here? And they were thinking, not only just thinking, they said it out loud, that they are going to perish in this wilderness. So what will happen? Take a look. In Numbers 14, 28, we just read, you know, they were Joshua, Caleb, what? imploring them not to act the way they wanted to act. And then God's glory appeared and trouble began. Let's look at what God said about them. And that's why I said you need to know this. Let's go to the book of Numbers 14 again, 28. Take a look. This is what the Bible said. It said, look at it, verse 28. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. Wow. I want you to see something today. And what's that? You need to know this. That your words determine your life largely. What you say out of your mouth determine your life. The kind of things you say about your life, your circumstances, your affairs, they wind up running your life. I want that to sink in. You need to know this. You see, yeah, we have so many things that are trying to make life either easier or difficult. But at the end of the day, what happens to us is what we say out of our mouth. God said to Moses, bring these people out. 
And God said, let's go to the promised land. And they agreed to go. But when they spoke against their going and they spoke of returning to Egypt, God said, they are going to have what they say, or what they said. He said, say to them, as I live, says the Lord, take a look at it again. Just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. Now you may say, <laughs> you, don't, you don't speak before the Lord, but the, the Lord is everywhere. So his ears are open, his eyes are open. And what you say, you actually say it in his hearing. I think you should think about that. Whatever you say, God is present there. So our words are very, very important. Our words determine our lives. You know, God said to Israel, chapter 30, verse 15, there about in the book of Deuteronomy, he said, I put before you life and death, blessing and cursing, the good and the evil. Choose. And you know the way you choose? With your mouth. What you say runs your life. I want us to delve into this more, the power of our words. Our words determine a lot of things to happen in our lives. What, what we finally get, what we reap in our life, what we get in our lives, the kind of things we experience, they largely come from our mouths. I'm not making this up. So I want us to do some study why this is so. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. And it will give us some light here. Let's look at chapter 6, the book of Proverbs, verse 2. It says, verse 2, look at it. You are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. Wow. Did you hear that? You are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. That means you are trapped by the words of your mouth. And you are taken captive by the words of your mouth. What you say, they take you captive. What you say, they trap you. Oh, oh, we can sit in the other way. What you say can liberate you. What you say can set you free. So largely, your freedom or your captivity, your bondage or your liberty, they are formed by the words of your lips. What you say will determine how things turn out. What you say determines how things turn out in your life. What you say determines how you yourself turn out in life. It says you are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken or taken captive by the words of your mouth. That was <laughs> repeated. Not by the words of radio or TV or something, by the words of your own mouth, by your own words coming from your lips. So you need to know this. A lot of time, when we find ourselves in some issues that kind of just bind us and hold us down, if we trace the root spiritually and biblically, they be stepping from out our mouth. Let me prove that. We're going to go to Proverbs again and, and we're going to read chapter 21, verse 23, Proverbs. Listen to this. Take a look. He says this, whoever guards his mouth and tongue keep his soul from trouble. Take it again. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from trouble. I want you to appreciate that. Whoever guards his mouth keeps his soul from trouble. Wow. You want your soul, you want your life to be free from troubles? Start doing something about your mouth. How relevant the word of God is. How powerful it is. I, I, I want you to see something with me. This is important. Very, very important for your life. You can't just say anything. You can't just be using your words anyhow and expect the opposite to happen in your life. It says if you don't guard your mouth, if you don't guard your words, troubles are not far from your soul. Uh, let's let's dig more into this. I want us to spend some time to look at this thoroughly well. Proverbs chapter 18 again. Let's look at that and then we'll give us some extra explanation here. I'm saying all this for your own sake. That's I say, you need to know this. If you don't know this, it won't work. And it can be working against you actually. A lot of us are working against ourselves. We don't know. We think it's the devil that is working against us. 
We think is God is trying to block us. But a lot of time, we are blocked by our mouth. We are blocked by the words of our mouth. So let's talk about that more. Let's go start at 18 Proverbs, verse 20. Take a look. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lip, he shall be filled. Now, look at what he says next. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. See, whether you experience death or life, it doesn't depend on death and life. It depends on your mouth. He said, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Physical death, spiritual death, financial death, marital death, marital life, financial life, spiritual life, physical life, both life and death are these different realms. They are in the power of the tongue. Our mouth largely control our lives. What we say brings up what happens in our lives. So a lot of times, the thing that you see happening in people's lives is because of what they say. You may say, what about prayer? You know, you have to say prayer to, with your mouth. It's coming from your mouth. So prayer, words, they all are around the same area. Jesus will say sometimes things about what you say. But let's talk about, now you may be saying, oh, Pastor, you've been quoting from Old Testament since. What about New Testament? Is there anything about this, the New Testament? Let's dig into that. Let's go to Matthew 12. Jesus was talking about words there, and then I wanted to see uh, certain things he said about words. It's it, 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 it's very interesting, <laughs> you know. Let me. I want to I want to open it for you so you can get rid of it, and it will really bless you. Uh, let me find the exact place. Uh, where is it now? Just a minute. I'll get it for us, so you know that what you say from your mouth really affect your life. And if you don't say it well, it will not turn out well in your life. If you say it well, I find the place. Let, let's let's get into twelfth Matthew. Verse 33. Take a look. He said, Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the earth, the mouth speaks. Okay. This is getting very interesting. Look at what Jesus said. Jesus said that our mouth speaks from our heart. And because our hearts are important, we need to work on our heart and then speak the right thing. Are you hearing me? If you don't speak the right words, you will wind up committing yourself to a lot of trouble. And Jesus said, make the tree good and this fruit will be good. Make the tree bad and it's fruit to be. Let's go back there. And I want us to just read some more from that 33 we just read to 34. Let's, let's look at it. Let's go to verse 35. Take a look. It says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. Now, listen to this. Oh, I love this one. This, you need, I want you to see 36. 37. It's from the mouth of Jesus. What did he say? Take a look. He says, But I say to you that for every I do word, men may speak. They will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you'll be justified, and by your words you'll be condemned. Wow. For by your words you'll be justified, and by your words you'll be condemned. One more time. For by your words you'll be justified and by your words you'll be condemned. Jesus was simply repeating what he said under the Old Testament again. He was the one who wrote the word. is the word. is the living word. He said, 
every idle word, every unproductive, every word that you speak casually without putting so much of your earnestness and seriousness into it. And you, you know, issues will occur in your life and you don't take the moment to actually determine to speak the words of direction. You just throw yourself wide open into whatever you feel or whatever you think you do on purpose speak. You know, the Bible said that in the beginning when God made the man, he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over all the earth. And that dominion was essentially put in our mouth because we could speak. God made us in his image. God speaks and we speak. And so, you see, we, we among all creatures on the earth, we are allowed to speak. Why? Because we can control things with our mouth. Like we said, death and life and the power of the tongue. And you see, Jesus said that because what you say will affect you. Why? Because in a way, you have dominion here. Just imagine the president of a country. He can't just speak anyhow. He can't just say things, you know, just playing all the time. He must come with a sense of gravity and seriousness and depth of purpose. You are also the ruler in your own life. You are the gate that things come through. You are the border. You are the customs of your own life. And what comes into the territory of your life, determined by the gateway of your mouth, what you say affects your life deeply. I'll read it again. Jesus said this. Take a look. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you'll be justified, and by your words you'll be condemned. All right. So Jesus saying that your condemnation or your justification, they come from your mouth. They come from your words. <laughs> Let's take for instance. Are you born again today? You said, Jesus be my Lord. Those words took you away from being on the road to hell and set you on the way to heaven. Are you married? The day you went to the altar and you said, I do. That's still your marriage. Just two words. I do. Put you married today. Remember the day of your naming ceremony? They called you by that name, Tunde Amosun. That's talked to you all your life. You can change your name later, but you do not go through a long process. <laughs> so, words control our lives. Now, what I want you to see is that, yeah, you can see the word of marriage, the word of salvation, the word of naming, but Words are as much as important every day like that. Jesus said, by your word you'll be justified. So if you want to be justified for health, for deliverance, for salvation, for joy, for peace, use your words. And your words can condemn you. Your word can banish you to poverty. Your words can banish you to sin. Your word can banish you to bad habit. I remember Smith was that great man of God. Somebody came to meet him and said, look, I'm banned with alcohol. I just can't be free. Smith, who goes what look at him and said, say it, that you are free. You see, if you are in the captivity, you begin to speak as a captive. If you are in bondage, you speak as in prison. The way you speak outside the prison is not the same way you speak inside the prison. You are confined. But Smith said, speak that you are free. He said, I am not free. He said, say that you are free. Like when God said, as I live, says the Lord, whatever they speak in my hearing, that I will do to them. God will see that what you say come to pass. If you speak condemnation, it will be written for you to be condemned. If you speak justification, it will be established for you to be justified. Remember I said, take a look again. Let's read it again one more time. Jesus said, but I say to you that for every idle word, unproductive, thoughtless word, men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. The judgment will come when that word will come back with the harvest. What are we going to do? I'm laboring on this fact that you need to know this. 
I'm spending time. I know that when we watch social media, when we watch messages, we like it to be short. But this is important. That's why I'm taking some time on it. And I want to close with what I call the big passage on this. We're going to read James chapter 3. James gives us greater light about this matter. I want you to take a look. We will read from verse Let's we start from, from verse 1. Take a look. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive strict judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, in what he says, is a perfect man, able also to bridle or control the whole body. Listen to what he says. He said we all stumble in many things. But if a man does not get faulty in his words, he's a mature man, he's a perfect man. He's able to control his whole body. Amazing. Guess what? Look at it again. What is James saying? James is saying that if you don't stumble in your words, if you say the right word, you're a perfect man and you're able to control your whole body. Wow. So many of us are looking for how do we control our lives. He said the moment you can take charge of your, your mouth, you can be speaking less of faulty words, you will start controlling your whole body of existence. Amazing. And, and he started proving it further. Let's go back to that place we are reading. Look at what it says. Verse 3. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouth that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at sheep. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce wind, they are torn by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desire. Look at the sheep on the sea. They, 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 are, they, they, they are so much winds around them. So fierce wind sometimes. But the captain of the ship get hold of the steering wheel called, called, called rudder, and he can turn it wherever he desire. Same way with your life. There are so many factors, so many pressures, social, financial, economic, spiritual, psychological, climatic, whatever we have in our world today, marital, all that stuff, there are different winds blowing our lives. But listen, it says that when you get hold of the steering, which is your mouth, you can take and turn your life to where you want it to go. Take a look at it again. He said, look also at sheep, verse 4. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce wind, they are torn by a very small rudder, whatever the plot desires. Now look at it. Look at what he's saying. Verse 5. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest, a little fire kindles? Wow. If you want to burn down a whole place, you don't need big fire. You just need a match to start it. And that match, if it catches on, it burns down the whole place. Same way, the Bible is saying that your mouth is a fire. Let's read it, verse 6. Verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defines the whole body and set on fire the cause of nature and set on fire by hell. I want to close like this. You see, God strategically put your mouth in a position in your life that it will determine everything that comes to your life or get away from your life. Did you hear that? Let's read it again one more time. Take a look. Verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defies the whole body and set on fire the cause of nature, set on fire by hell. Now, Satan knows how to bring mess into your life. What does he do? He sets your mouth on that cause. Your mouth starts speaking it. You feel it, you think it, but I won't control you until you start saying it. And as you say it, your mouth is set on fire. And because your mouth in that strategic position in your life, it catches on in your whole life. Like that fire. You light the match, it catches on in the forest and start burning. It can burn the whole place down. So what I'm saying in essence is this. You need to know that your mouth determines your life. Yes, God is there. Yes, the devil is there. Yes, 
There are circumstances and situations of life. But if you set your mouth against certain way, that way will not manifest in your life as such. So if you set your mouth in line with God, I close with that, set your mouth in line with God, set your mouth in the way of blessing, in the way of victory, in the way of peace, in the way of holiness, in the way of joy, in the way of righteousness, then you will see that all manifest in your life. You may not see it quickly, but just keep saying it. Just keep doing that. God said, as I live, says the Lord, whatever they say in my hearing, that I will do for them. If you keep on saying health and healing and salvation and righteousness and holiness, God will see to it that they happen in your life. And if you keep on saying the wrong things, disasters and struggles and pain and embarrassment and insult, you will reap the harvest. Thank you for listening. I appreciate your presence today.